Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, shalom, Chabarim, shalom. And uh, special greetings to my fellow Just Vibes and host and co-host, Ross Seymour. Yes, brother. You remember the other day we was reasoning and we were talking about, you know, seven dispensations of man, you know, and certain interesting points of the gospel and of the scriptures and from like the Hebrew, the Yehudi perspective, how, how we see these things. You know what I mean? And in that anointing of the King of Kings Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christus Getachin. Uh, how, how do you see this in light of the seven? You know, some say that, you know, there's only one life. People say you got one life to live. Well, you don't really find that directly in the scriptures, seeing that the Hebrew word for life, oh, chant. I wanted to get that as a screenshot, you know, as an exhibit to share. But you can look it up or ask anyone who understands, you know, Hebrew, you know, correctly. Chayim, the word Chayim. The word is Chayim and Chayim, right? Chayim, like you may hear one say, sometimes say Yehudi or, you know, Jews would toast one another and say, Lachayim, Lachayim. You probably heard that expression before. Lachayim, Lachayim. Like, now what does lechayim mean? Often in the translation, like people say lechayim and they say, oh, you know, Jews, Yehudi say lechayim. All right, well, actually the Hebrews and the Bnei Yisrael, children of the Israelites, also, you know, from, from the beginning, <laughs> you know, lechayim. But this expression is, can be interpreted as cheers. But actually the expression lechayim mean like for life, to life, to life to life. And they say that the, the whole term cheers, that's a whole very, you know, Anglo, was Anglo-Saxon, Protestant sort of thing. So this is not to get on that subject matter right there, but just to use it as a point of reference for what we'd like to bring forward here. I was thinking about this. So, you know, I'm going to speak to my brother and share it with him a little later on. But I say, you know what, right now is it's a speaking spirit, the speaking in the Raha Kadosh is with us. So let me just articulate it right here because once again, it's come to my mind. I said, I need to record something and share this with others. Notice that the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? One of the key gifts of the Memphis Kedus and the Amharic, the Ruach, Ruach HaGadosh, is the gift of tongues, right? Or speaking, right? The speaking in tongues. Now, of course, there's a lot of different ideas, interpretation. If you're Pentecostal and you know, I grew up around the Pentecostals. So I know, you know, that connection with, you know, the scripture and the gospel concerning Pentecost, Pentecost Day and what occurred and how the cloven tongues of fire rested on all the heads of those assembled in the upper room. <laughs> Interesting. I'm recording this on our Thursday, the Thursday podcast time. And this is the time for the upper room of Zion because we're that occurred i think it's acts of the apostles um was it chapter well beginning of chapter one but the key part in chapter two you know so the gift of tongues what was that was it jibber jabber was it just speaking ecstatically you know speaking because you just feel a vibe or something no it was actually speaking linguistically in language because see, the Hebrew or the Israelite community, the Judahite and Israelite community was scattered. Right? They were Yehudi, Yehudim, Judahite scattered in other lands. Almost like we are even here in the diaspora, here in the Americas and the Caribbean. We, right, the Beta Israel, right, we are the Beta Israel of the West. You've heard a lot about the Ethiopian Jews, the Ethiopian Yehudi, Yehudim, Ehudot, heard a whole lot about them. And those are our our fellows, our brothers and sisters, yes. You know what I mean? But what about us over here in the West? So to speak about us over here in the West. Now, that's not the point, main point here, but to this particular verse. So I had asked my brother, what about this verse right here? What would you say? You know, if we say there's seven dispensation, you know, and the number seven is very significant in the Hebrew we could say in the Hebrew scriptures, right? In the Hebrew thought, we could say in the Yehudi thought as the Moshiach, Adonai, Yeshua, 
as Jesus Christ says, ye worship that which you know not, we know what we worship for salvations of the Jews. That's what he said. That's what the master, the sovereign, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach said, salvation. Now, what does that mean? That's another good point to reason on. Right? Does that mean this of people if they call themselves Jews and are not? You know, you know the blasphemy of those who say, no, we're not speaking about that. But we're speaking about something about the proper perspective to these here scriptures. I mean, this is in Hebrews, right? This is Hebrews chapter nine, verse twenty-seven. I guess many will seek to, you know, tell you what this verse means, or they can say, I can explain. I know what this verse means. But here's the question. Do you speak in the tongues of the tongues, right? And have that gift of the interpretation of tongues. See, I'm asking that because when I first asked it, I was asking from the perspective of it's appointed once for a man to die, right? And after this is the judgment. Is this is this the way the verse is? Let, let's bring up the scripts right here, here, here. So we add actually already, yeah, this is Hebrews 9, verse 27. And as it is appointed to men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So I've, I've heard this, this verse preach, you know, and this is where the idea, right, that, you know, people say we, we only live once. Mm. Remember I said that the Hebrew word for life? Right, the Hebrew word for life is chayim, ha ye ye me chayim, 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 chayim means lives. Chay, in the singular, right? You say it's life, right? Chay, like chaye sara, the life of the lives. Actually, the lives in that sense. But what I'm trying to get across right here is that in the Hebrew, when we say life. Right, as it's used in many of the verses that we get in the translations, actually lives, chayim. So even life, when it says he breathed into man, right, right, the breath of life. Remember the breath of life. I, I got to show this right here because this is important before we reveal something that was even a revelation to us. Right, this was a revelation to us. Right, I know that. Through his will, we've showed certain revelation to others, but this is a revelation to ourselves right here in, in recent time. And once again, Ra Seymour. <laughs> yes, I hope you check this one out. Bereshi, Genesis 2 and 7. And Yahweh Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. You see the word chai? This is the H2416. This is in a singular sense. And let's bring it down here in the singular sense, right? The singular sense, right? Let's see if it, if, if it shows this right here. Or sometimes they show it within their notes. Give me one moment. You see the noun as a feminine. The word can be a noun as a feminine. And then it can also be a noun as masculine, right? A noun as masculine. Some of the senses of what Chai, Chai is, Chai, life, right? Did they have the plural? Okay, there it goes right there. It says, especially in the feminine singular. Look at this. Especially in the feminine singular and masculine plural. So now in Ivrit, in Hebrew, we find this word in some cases, right? In some cases, in the feminine singular so this is a word we could say this is a word um a noun but also it has its verb usage that can be found in the feminine singular right the feminine singular sense as well as the masculine plural so when we said chai chai right there that is the well like in chayat chayat this is another interesting note right here you know, the King James Version of the Bible does not have, you can't find in the old King James Version, the word animal. You will not find the word animal written in the text, maybe described in notes from various different, you know, note takers and note givers take note. 
but you will not find that in the actual translation of the text. You'll find creature, living creature, right, or beast, you know, to refer to animals. But when we look into Genesis, Bereshith chapter 1, and here now we're beginning off the Shabua, the the. The Shemesta here, we're beginning off our weekly Torah portion, reading and feedings. We just had Bereshis, and I was reminded of this again when it talked about, you know, the different, you know, the different living creatures. Let the living creatures, Chayat, it uses the term Chayat, that's the feminine singular. But then we have Chayim, Chayim, Chayim. That's the mask with the Yod Mim, the M. Chayim, the im at the end, like Elohim. So we have Chayim. So Chayim actually means lives. Why is this important? Because you see how the verse right here says the breath of life. You see life, singular. But let's go here to the Hebrew text for a moment. Just to share the Hebrew text. Which one you prefer, the Tanakh? Let's go on to Tanakh. All right, for scholarly purposes right here. Vayitzer, Vayitzer Yehovah Elohim, or Vayitzer Yahuwah Elohim, right? Vayitzer, right? And Elohim, Yahuwah, the Elohim, right? Formed et ha Adam, formed the Adam, Afar, 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 thus or ancient people, even the Ethiopian people known as the Afar. But here it says, Wayitzer Yahuwah Elohim et ha Adam Afar mina ha Adam Wayipach Wayipach Vayipach Vayipach Wayipach And he Yipach Breathe Pach 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 Breathe Be Apav They'll say modern Hebrew Be Apav Or more ancient point Be Apayo be apayo, be apayo, be apav, be apayo, in his ap, his af, nostrils. Nishamat. Here, let me highlight the phrase right here. Here's the key phrase. Nishamat or nishmat. Here, point as nishmat chayim. Nishmat chayim. Nishmat. The breath, chayim, lives. So actually, where it says the breath of life, is actually the breath of lives, right? The breath of lives. So if this was more properly translated, let's see if any of the highlight translators that we have, no, everyone follows the usual Western Gentile translation, breath of life, breath of life, breath of life, right? But actually it's the breath of lives. Nishmat, Nishmat Chayim. It's not Nishmat Chay or Nishmat Chayat. You know what I mean? That would be like the breath of the animals in a sense, in the translation. You know what I mean? Sense. But it says the Nishmat Chayim. Like saying Lachayim, Lachayim, Lachayim. Right? Isn't this interesting? Within Adam, right? Within Ha Adam, within the Adam, right? Yehovah Elohim, right? He formed man, Wayitzer, and Wayipach, Wayipach. And he breathed, Be'apayo, Be'apav, right? He breathed into his nostrils, the Nishmat Chayim, the Nishmat Chayim, the breath of lives. Once again down here, the breath of lives. These words right here, these two words, Nishmat Chayim. Wayahi, Vayahi, Wayahi, and being and becoming Wayahi, Vayahi Ha'adam. And the Adam, Wayahi Ha'adam, Le Nefesh, a soul, Chaya. So you see right here? So here, oh man, I, I press on this thing down here. Let's go down here. Let's scroll down here again. Here we go. Okay, see this right here? This is interesting. This is Chayat, Chaya, Chaya. So when it says that man became, right, man became a, okay, let's see if I can highlight both these words. This here is in the feminine, right, the, the breath of Chayim. The breath, Nishmat, feminine sense, Nishmat Chayim, Chayim of lives. Why Yehi Ha'adam Lenefesh became of 
soul, nefesh is feminine, the soul and male and female, according to the ancient Hebrew Afro-Shemitic context is feminine, chaya. So we have chaya, this is the word chaya, remember the feminine singular? Let's see if we can bring up that sense right here where it broke that down, right? The chai, right? The chai, some of the different senses, right? Relatives, noun, masculine. Life in the abstract, emphatic, the noun, masculine, like chayim. That's the sense there, life, sustenance, maintenance. But now a living thing or animal or like the soul is nefesh chaya. Now here we have the noun feminine, as we just showed you right there, where it says man became a living soul, right? A living soul, right? Nefesh, soul, chaya. That's the feminine sense. Animal, right? Life, appetite, revival, renewal, and also in the sense of the community. So there's certain senses of Hebrew, both. This also highlights where it says, let's make man in our image after our likeness. Zakar. Unekeba, male and female. So even in the linguistics, we get to see the this this beautiful expression, right, of an ancient science that when we study it in light of true science today, right, it proves it right and accurate. So here we have what says also the noun, or it says also as noun, especially in the feminine singular and masculine plural, just to get that right there. And we have both of these in this one verse in Bereshith in Genesis chapter two, verse seven, All right? Genesis chapter two, verse seven. Just wanna show that there, and this is some of the ways the words are translated, right? Remember, they can be literally or figurat figuratively allegorically. Once again, the full of full of this verse right here, right? Elohim et ha'adam afar min ha'adama. Wa'yipacha be'apayo nishmata chayim. Wa'yihi ha'adam lenefesh chaya. And more better translation, Yahuwah Elohim, form, squeeze, form the man of the afar of the Adama, of the Afar, of the Adama, and breathe into his nostrils the Nishmat Chayim, the breath of lives. And the man Ha'adam became a living soul, a Nefesh Chaya. So this is beautiful here because what we have is the breath of life, Breath in a kind of feminine sense, nishmat, and then the chayim, right? Lives, the breath of lives, and ha adam, and the man now, because of the nishmat, the chayim, the breath of lives, of lives. So we say la chayim, la chayim, la chayim, la chayim. We want to say to life, access to lives, right? To lives. Now, I know I went there and wanted to be like, why did you go there? because it was necessary, right, to go there, right? It's very necessary. Let's go back to the, a point, right, once, right? Now, here brings us to this verse, Hebrews 9 and 27. I asked my brother, I said, what would you say? We're talking about the, the seven dispensations. So I, I told him I don't agree, disagree. I don't disagree with him on that. But how can that be articulated, right, and verified? By the scriptures, by the Bible, by her Torah, by the scriptures. That, that was my question, my inner question. So I expressed my inner question to my brother, right? Chaber, right? I, and I associate and the Chaberim of the Chaberim, right? And the Talmudim, the disciples, right? What, what, what would you say to this verse? And as it is appointed to men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Now, I've, I've, I must have quoted this many different times. I know I've quoted this many different times, you know, because I've heard it, you know, in, in, in the church, you know, and going to church on Sundays and different days, you know, and growing up, I became familiar with it before I was even reading the Bible or into the Bible. You know, when you hear about a lot of things and then you finally get into some of those things or you start to seek it for yourself and you say, oh, yeah. Somebody told me about this before. Yeah, I remember this. This verse here. Now, how do we read this verse? And 
as it is appointed to men once to die. See, it's the word chayim, right? It's the word chayim in the Hebrew. From the beginning, we showed you Bereshi, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. What's implied there from reading the scriptures from a Hebrew perspective that we have to talk about it like this, you know? And reading it from a Hebrew perspective, the, these sort of questions come up, right? And this is why we're addressing this. Because then after I, I, I put the question to my brother, I started to think about it. You know, when you get that vibe like, hmm, why am I getting like another download? I was getting another download. And then later on, you know, we reasoned. And I don't know whether we had recorded our Just Vibes and some more Just Vibes. And, you know, we have we have so much more to share. You know, y'all willing. You know, look who here, look who there. But afterward, I began to reflect. And then I started to look into the verse. I said, I said let me look into the Hebrew. Let me even look into the Amharic. You know, let me compare. Cause it sounds like, you know, when you read the English, you're like, yeah, yeah, that's, 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 you know, that's what it says. You know what I mean? You know, that's what it is. But then as I begin to look at the Hebrew, I begin to say, uh-oh, uh-oh. This is one of those verses here where something is translated in English, right? And it seems to convey this sort of sense or this sort of meaning. But then when looked at in the right context, we get to recognize, oh, no, 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 no. There is another context and there's another meaning that basically gets, as you would say, lost in the source so to speak. And this happens with many relevant areas. I mean, most of those areas where there's a big, big debate, even among Christians sometimes or believers, sometimes there's a big debate on some area of scripture. And sometimes the enemy has used this to divide congregations and groups. A lot of it comes down to linguistics. A lot of it comes down to that Holy Spirit gift. Think about the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the scriptures, especially in the Brit Hadash and the New Testament, New Covenant, the Renewed Covenant. And you, you have to recognize that language and ability to comprehend language is, is, is almost on the same par of discerning spirits. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying this is purely an intellectual exercise, although, you know, a good intellect or a good intellectual perspective, you know what I mean? under and within the Holy Spirit is, is key. Because when I read this, it almost seems like, okay, man has a death date coming, and then after that, he's going to be judged. This is how this verse is often received. This is how I received it. I'm sure many of you all may still receive it like that. It's appointed for man to die once. And now, the way it's written and translated here, we might begin to think and say, hmm, this right here, actually is saying that we only live once, right? Yet in a life is many lives, right? In a life is many lives. Okay, now I had I had a few different, let me see if I can, let's see if I, if I can, yeah, if I can cut this one here. Okay, brothers and sisters, this is going to be a little bit, hope it doesn't adversely affect the video too much right here all right okay let's go over here and let's go back to 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 yeah okay yeah i had okay okay that's why i have the verse elsewhere i wanted to like play the recorder but when it's on the side the, the whole phone thing hopefully the phone adjusts correctly right it was this particular verse right here um where is the yeah, where is the Hebrew? Okay. Here's a Hebrew reading of it. Okay, once again, once again. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take, it, let's take it a little slow. So here, this translator, this is basically like Google translator here, but some things it kind of brings out some interesting senses. 
something sometimes is, is a little off. But here, Wika Asha, Wika Asha, Nigzar Al Bnei Adam Pa'am Pa'am Achat Ha Mawet Ha Mawet Ha Mawet. Right? So here it says, and as or and like Wika Asher. So and ka as or like Asher. Now here they translate it as when. In the Hebrew, it could it's almost like the key, the key in biblical Hebrew. The word the, when we say key, you know, um it's a kind of a prepositional idea. But it also can mean and like and as, right? Nigzar, nigzar, you know, like condemnation, nigzar. Right, Gazar, Nigzar, you know, Al Bnei Adam, upon the sons of Adam. Now, see the Hebrew sense. You you see men there. Remember, in the beginning, we get an Adam, which is often defined in the English as man, right? And the sons of Adam. Here we have a sons of Adam sense. Now, the men, yes, men equals sons of Adam, but there's something that is lost by not seeing it from the Hebrew perspective. See, this was translated as and when, or more correctly, and as, and as, right, the sons of Adam, right, being condemned, right, as condemnation, nigzar, right, al bnei Adam, pa'am achat, pa'am achat. Now, pa'am achat, pa'am is like to say like a beat, like, like, like. Like almost like that could be almost like a pa, pa'am, a pa'am, 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 pa'am. Almost like if you think about the sound of it, pa'am, 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 achat. Achat is once in the feminine sense, like achad. Here we have achat, right? One time, like once, right? But the, the, the sense of this also brings out, you see the translations, and when men are condemned once to die, right? Ha-ma-wet. Right, the death. But really what it's saying that once, once the condemnation, mm -hmm, kind of like the sense of the appointment, right, against the sons of men happens for, for death, the death, right? The, almost like when the death penalty is is pronounced upon a man. So somebody, okay, let's put it like this. Somebody, somebody has a trial. Right? Somebody somebody goes to trial. Right? And they look at the evidence, the, the, the pro and the, the, the against, right? And then it's judged against that particular man. Right? Then what comes after that? The judgment, right? Right? The judgment is what comes after. The Aharav Hadin. We Aharayo Hadin. That's the ancient biblical. We Aharayo. Modern Hebrew to say, Ve Aharav Hadin. Hadin. Now I notice that the word there is Dean from the Don. Right? The Don is like the execution of the judgment. So once, like once one has a trial and, and they say, Well, how do you find you know, the, the, the person, and they say, well, guilty. The, the, the sons of Adam are guilty. Then what comes next? It's the judgment. It's what will be the execution of the judgment. We have this also as we get into the third chapter. We could go to the third chapter of Bereshith of Genesis and see that example, right? That they were condemned, right? Or they were appointed, right? Appointment. See, it uses here in the Hebrew, it says, Nigzar al, Nigzar, the Gazar, right? Gezer, right? Almost like it's cut, right? It's cut against the sons of man, right? The death one time. But it's putting it within the language of a court, like a court or a trial, that once one has been appointed to die, the appointment to die is after a trial and one is found worthy of death, they are appointed to die, right? That's the judgment. They've been found guilty. And what comes next? The Aharav Hadin, Hadin, Hadin. And after 
and afterwards comes the execution of it. That means putting that one to death. See, I pause right here because I'm just reasoning. If I was reasoning for my brother, you know, he'd give me feed forward on it. But just taking a pause right here and I'm going to ask one, do you understand what we're seeking to express? In other words, instead of it saying, and when men are condemned once to die, once condemnation, you know, once there's a condemnation against the sons of men, the sons of Adam, once there's that condemnation, almost like once there's the trial, and one has been found guilty. Looked at all the evidence and found that evidence to be al bnei Adam, nigzar al bnei Adam, right? Pa'am achat hamawet, right? Once that has, once it has has struck, almost like like you know, like the whole trial goes through, you know. And then we have a perfect example of this when we go to the verse, right? When we go to the verse right here, because what's the next verse? which is the last verse of this chapter. It says, so, so, in other words, like this, so, Mashiach, Mashiach, Christ, the anointed, what was once, notice the key word once. Mm. You see what I'm saying? The key word once. So what's explaining is that when a person is tried and has been found guilty, and the guilt or the judgment is something that is like the crime is worthy of death. We can go through the scripture. There are some crimes worthy of death. You know what I mean? There's some crimes that are worthy of death. And even we have, even in the New Testament, a, a kind of a similar principle because Yah, Yeshua, is the same today, yesterday, and forever. So that's a similar principle. You know what I'm saying? There's a similar principle, like say, say the murderers. You know, that's what it says, we have to suffer, but don't suffer like a murderer. You know, because a murderer's suffering basically leads to that death. You know, is there grace with, with the Almighty? Of course there is, but there's principles. See, in order for one to get grace, for example, if someone is, is appointed to die. You know what I mean? If someone is appointed to die. Now, let's take the, the more direct context of what we have here, because this is clear that what we have in this particular verse, right? What we have in this particular verse concerneth Mashiach, but is using the example of the B'nai Adam. It's using the example of the children of men, right? The sons of, literally the sons of Adam. And Adam here would ascribe to all humanity, generally, generally speaking. What we have in the epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 9, right, chapter 9, right, chapter 9, verse 27. And as it is appointed to men once to die, right, death, physical summary, right? Now, does it apply in the sense that most people take it to apply? Because most of us, even myself, I took this to apply, like, you know, that, that once a person dies, Right after that, there's a judgment. Right, so once one dies, afterward there's a judgment, and then we get even within the cycle of the resurrection, the resurrection of the good, right, and the resurrection of the not good, according to the Brit Hadasha. Right, does it apply in that sense? Well, yes, it does apply in that sense, but this primary sense was regarding the affairs, right, of what our high priest of our salvation, Yeshua HaMoshiach, what Jesus Christ, what he fulfilled for us. As it says, the one sacrifice of the new covenant is better than the many sacrifices of the old, right? The many sacrifices of the old. And as it's appointed to men once to die or once, we say a better reading of this is that once, right? And once, right, and once, right, the sons of men, the children of men, people, men in general, under trial and judgment, right, are appointed or it has been um, geza, like cut, like cut against them. Something like the word circumcised has a kind of interesting connection to the word geza. Once it's cut to them. Right. Once it's cut to them like this, 
right? Then after the guilty sentence, guilty, death penalty, you know, like if somebody did something and the, if they was guilty, they're going to have to die. Once they say that they are guilty, right? What's the next thing? What comes after that is hadin, right? The acharav hadin and the execution of the sentence. This is why even in Hebrew, there are a few words that generally may be translated by the same word. But as we study, we see a different sense. Like hadin, like the dean or the don, right? Is a little different than the, the shafat, right? We have shafat, we have yadan, right? Like to execute, to judge in the sense of to perform the execution. So the first part of the trial is like the weighing part, the mishpat, right? The mishpat, the judgment, right? Is weighing it, right? Is weighing it. And once it comes to the, 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 the weight, you know what I mean? Once, it's almost like you put things on the scale and the scale is going up and down. And once the scale settles... That is the judgment on what the weight or the measurement is right there. And then now once you come to that point, then you come to the next part of the business. So what this is basically breaking down is the business of man who is on trial. Now, is humanity, the sons of Adam on trial, according to the, you could say the Hebrew, you know, from, from the Hebrew and the Torah and the Brit Hadash of you? Yes. But specifically... This was regarding and it's regarding Yeshua right here. That's why it says, as that principle is true, there's a trial. Wasn't there a trial of Yeshua? Mm -hmm. And there was many, you know, witnesses, but even many more false witnesses and many cloak and dagger and, 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 and malpractice of law and intention, you know, and switching charges, everything, right? The Yehudim, Right, who were haters of Moshecheinu, of Adonainu, were seeking of Robainu, were seeking to do against him. Right? So it says, so Christ, Moshia, was once offered to bear the sins, right, of many. Mm -hmm. Because Messiah, think about it, even the same thing, Messiah on that level stands, right, for Yisrael. Just as the high priest, notice that the high priest throughout the book of Hebrews, the epistle to the Hebrews, it's explaining the relationship of the high priest, why the role of the high priest. And therefore, we have to look at the first Christ or the first anointed in the scripture, right? According to the Hebrew terminologies, Mashiach was the high priest, namely Aharon and the first Christians or Meshachim, Meshachim, the anointed ones in the true Hebrew sense, were the sons of Aaron. And they bore responsibility for the sins and the misdeeds of Kol Yisrael, of the whole congregation. So when the high priest went in, right, on the day of the atonement, Yom HaKippurim, right, to perform what he was to perform, that was on behalf of all Yisrael. The first thing he had to do was offer sacrifices to clear, to clear himself, right? And then that would now make him fit within the rite and the ritual to offer the sacrifices to clear the people. This is a principle, right? There's somewhat of a, a lawful, Torahful aspect to it, right? Of what fulfills proper practices and procedures. And we see, right? that in the case of the Moshiach, HaMoshiach Yeshua, this was not done properly. But the principles still can be found there, that once he was found so-called guilty, right? You know, and, and notice how what Pontius Pilate was doing. Pontius Pilate is a saint within the, you know, Israelites of Ethiopia and the Ethiopian Orthodox Church from that ancient tradition. So that's an interesting concept there. Not in the Roman church, because he was a, a Roman. You see, there's a kind of a schizophrenia right there. The Romans on one side and the Romans on the next side, the papacy, you know. So you have to open your eyes and see right there. But once it was pronounced, right, then we have that road to, you know, um, Calvary, right? We have that road to Calvary. You see what I'm saying? 
we we have to 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 Golgotha. You know, we have that tribe to Golgotha where he carried the cross beam that was attached to the tree. So there was a tree, yes, but he carried a cross beam, right? The cross was the cross beam of wood, you know? So this is what I began to recognize is that the reading of this often has been, you know, that, well, for every man, it's appointed for him to die. Well, yes. That is true, but the context of this from the Hebrew and in the true Yehudi Judaic context, remember what Yeshua said, ye worship that which ye know not, we know we worship for salvation of the Jews, right? This was in a, a, a law sense, a, a sense of trial and judgment, just as there's a trial and judgment on each individual man, right? Just in general. And on the sons of Adam, in particular, scripturally speaking, this takes us all the way back to the beginning. And even the book of Jude mentions Hanok or Enoch, right? And we get references to Ethiopic Jubilees. But those, that's not what we're putting forward because some might have controversy on that. But just speaking plainly right here, it is saying as Christ now, the Messiah, we could say the high priest, of call to Israel as he now right went through that trial that ordeal and when they had made their decision remember what the high priest the other high priest the bogus high priest did Caiaphas or whatever his name was he ripped his garments and what what need do we have of further witnesses you see and basically in their court this is why when you look at the trial of Yeshua right it was a bogus trial, and there's many improprieties in that trial, how it was executed. And not just from the Roman perspective, but even the Yehudi, right? You know, those, those Yehudi, those Pharisees and scribes who hated and sought to kill the Messiah because they sought to recognize, right? They sought to recognize that they were not going to repent and that he was the end of their fraud. So they had to, you know, almost like um, preempt, you know, preempt their own demise. So they went forward. They had their trial. Then they sent it to Pontius Pilate and the Pilate to Herod and then back, I think, to Pontius Pilate, round and round and round. So in all, it was like three jurisdictions. Did you know that Moshiach was crucified in three jurisdictions? In three jurisdictions was he crucified. You know what I mean? He was crucified in three jurisdictions. In the Yehudi jurisdictions, right? Amongst the, the leaders of the Yehudi, of the Jews. You know, we say they're pastors and they're priests, but they're rabbis, scribes, Pharisees. You know, the religious leaders. And then, right, in the courts of Herod, the Herodian, right? We could say the local government, Right, the local government, right, and then before the Roman Empire, before Pontius Pilate, right, and effectively in each one of those jurisdictions, he was found guilty, and the ultimate sentence, as it says, Nigzar, Nigzar al Bnei Adam, but here Nigzar al Ben Ha Elohim, right. It was that condemnation of him, and therefore this is what led to the to the cross. This is what led to the tree, right? This is what led to the tree right here, right? So that's what this verse, these verses are seeking to bring out because it says, And to them that look for him, he shall appear the second time without sin to salvation, right? Now this is, a, this is the key right there. You know, these are beautiful words for... You know, the saints, the called out, I assembly, right? The true Nazarenes to reason on. You know, they're so important to reason on and to see. It's like looking at a gem. You're looking at a gemstone. You know how a gemstone, if it's properly cut, right? There are many different, you know, angles of beauty within the scripture, right? And when you truly interpret it and you truly receive it, one doesn't contradict the other one. So what we're explaining to ones about how it applies, right? The context of what is given there is applying to any man who is before the courts, right? 
and the likely punishment if found guilty is death. So once they say that he is guilty, the next thing is death. Once he say that they, he, is, he is innocent, the next thing is that he's freed. You see what I'm saying? But if he is guilty, like if it was another sort of, another judgment, another deen, right? V'aharav hadin. Another judgment can be, you know, and would be, right? Say if he defrauded somebody and then after they say, well, you're guilty. Now the next thing will be to sentence him, right? Or how much he would have to pay, how much he would have to recompense, what he would have to do, you know what I mean? In order now to, you know, kind of yishalem, yishalem, to make peace, but to also to pay, you know, that which he owe, right? Yishalem, interesting, shalem and shalom, but yishalem in the sense of to pay, right? He would have to make this peace, right? And now if he had done a crime that was worthy of death, well, then that peace, right, would be a much higher peace, right? Because basically if one is guilty of killing someone, none of us can forgive them because it's not any of us who have been the so-called murdered party, right? The murdered party, their soul, right, is waiting over there for the judgment. You, you see what I'm saying? You know, um... So that's why it says, you shall do no murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. Isn't it interesting that Yeshua was quoting those very same 10 words of his father, our father, Avinu Sheba Shemayim, right? Those same 10 words, right? As his majesty, how to slice the conquering line, the tribe of Judah says, his advice to all is to fulfill, right? See, and if we are able to, when we're able to fulfill, right? There is there is no Torah, right, against us. There's no Torah against us. There's no direction, instruction. There's no law against us. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Elohim, right? Judgment, right? Now, not all judgment, as we mentioned, is the death sentence. Now for man, for Adam, let me let me keep it clear. We say man in a general kind of generic sense, but specific sense of the scripture, we're speaking of Adam. And as it is appointed to men once to die, but once men, the sons of men, are appointed to die. Now notice it says, but after this, really, and after this. So he says, but in the translation, but we, vi, aharav, we, Aharayo. Aharav, aharayo, basically means an after. We is and, and after. Sometimes translated as but, but more correctly, is it should be and after. So once the sons of men are appointed to die, that means once there's a trial and once they are found guilty and they are worthy of death, after that is hadin is the deen, hadin, is the execution of the sentence, whatever that sentence is. But if it's a, if it's a sentence of being appointed to die, right? In other words, the, the, the death sentence, a, a crime worthy of death, that's what says, so Moshiach was once offered to bear the sin of many because there was many that betrayed. There was many that lied. There was many that ran away. You know what I mean? Many that didn't say what they should have said, right? And to them that look for him, he shall appear the second time, right? That second time. And this is what we say as Christ in his kingly character. You know what I mean? Our God Father, the King of Kings, testifying to the true way of Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? Without sin, without sin, to salvation and not just of the Yehudi, not just of we, the once lost, now found black and brown, Beta Yisrael, especially here in America's Caribbean, all over, right? But also for humanity that receive. And as it is once, so it's a translation here that causes one to miss the fundamental root part of it. Once the sons of men are appointed to die. And after that, once they are appointed to die, and after that is the judgment. I know it's not so-called perfect English, but it does bring out the true sense of the Hebrew. 
and as it is once appointed to the sons of men, the Bene Adam, right? Hamavet, Hamawet, where Aharav Hadin, and afterwards is Hadin, is the execution of the sentence, is the execution, right, of the judgment, right? And that's why the next verse is so pointed, right? The next verse is so pointed in saying what it says, right? And as much as it is appointed to men to die once. No, once a man has been condemned, nigzar, nigzar, or the sons of men, nigzar al bene Adam, right? That's why it speaks in the next verse about the many, the many. So as it happened to the many ones that were appointed to die, right, and got the death sentence, so it is with Moshia, right, for the many, for the many, because we put it into Hebrew context, we begin to understand, right? We begin to understand what role Yeshua is fulfilling within the Hebrew context. That's why it says, ye worship that which ye know not. We know we worship for salvations of the Yehudim, salvations of the Jews, the Judahites. Yes, I, Rastafari, the line of the tribe of Judah. Hak adosh baruku baruk Hashem.